invitation to speak and to the organizers. So I decided uh, to cheat with the prepared board and said I could have made a, a handout, but then handouts just got trashed. So these are all formulas that most of, most of you know, so I didn't feel like uh, uh, <laughs> writing them down again. So, uh, so this is also sort of the outline of the talk. So the first half of the is uh, the, the pretty well-known half of the of uh, Gonshoff I explained. Uh, so what, what this says is you have symbols with formal symbols, uh, and then you have a word of length n, which is kind of really strangely partitioned. It has two n's, and then there's a middle part, and there is a co-product on these. There is a product, which is important. It's just a free product. You just multiply symbols, so it's free. Uh, then the co-product says that uh, what you should do is uh, graphically depicted here. You pick some intermediate indices e i1, i2, i3. Then you write out the i0, which is 0, and the intermediate indices, and then the last one, ik, which is n, so that is the left-hand side. And then the right-hand side, what you do is you take, take everything between i0 and i1, and then here there's something, I'll, I'll mark that, so there's something that's interesting here that's happening that's unusual for... So you said the product is free, but I think you mean the product is a shuffle product. Uh, no, no, no. Here, here. I mean, just in the symbols. Oh, in the symbols. In the symbols. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. For this to be well defined, you need to. Try to <coughs> yeah, but these are symbols. I'm on the level of the symbolic half algebra. If you want to associate multi zeta values to this, then uh, you have to do something. But you know, there there are stages in this. Uh, sure, so sure. I'll take that as a question, but I can say it. So if you know what I'm talking about, there are stages in these half algebras that have been defined by Gontrop and by Brown. And depending on what you what kind of relations you put in, uh, you get you, you get to see something. But I, I'll go through that. At the moment, we're completely yeah, fine. My point, my just concern is that um, maybe I can't remember this correctly, but whether you need the shuffle relation for it to be well defined or not. Yes, in the, in, the, in the end of the day, if you just put zeros and ones, then it's uh, to, so to renormalize it. But this is like de level two okay. of, of things. So this is formal, then you make it non formal, then you realize it's okay. not renormalizable, and then you can shuffle renormalization. Mm -hmm. But okay, no. So that's not yeah. the formula. Okay, so this is just the formula which says you, you should do this, and the interesting <laughs> part that I wanted to point out is you re repeat this index. Okay? It's again the index I want. And graphically, this is given so this polygon uh, represents these i0 to i a k, and the pieces that fall off when you cut off the polygon again look like this half disk and contain those indices. So that's the graphical mnemonics. So the second one uh, uh, is uh, the Kronkrimer tree half algebra, where you take uh, uh, rooted trees and uh, you again take a free product in the same sense, you just put them next to each other. Uh, and then uh, you take uh, the co-product to be deep, so the primitive part, and then the reduced one is you take a tau zero rooted, a rooted sub tree, so it has to share the same root. So, and then tau minus tau zero. This was just explained by Dirk. Uh, so, so you cut off. Sorry, this is uh, minus. Sorry, this is wrong. This is minus. This is, goes the wrong way. Sorry about that. Tau minus tau zero. So you delete tau zero, and whatever you see is left. Okay, uh, there are several variations, and I'll get to that. There, if I say this is the free product, then I'm actually talking about the planar case. Otherwise, I would have to say symmetric product. There is one with leaves and one without leaves. Uh, so let this be the one that you see, which is planar without leaves. Okay. Uh, the next one is we just saw, uh, except that maybe you want to put conditions here or not. I have no conditions whatsoever at the moment. Uh, and the last one is something that uh, really has at one point uh, with conversations with Dirk is, well, actually, so, so there is a li nice hierarchy. So the first one I can explain as being simplicial. The second thing is involves trees, so it's actually operatic. I'll explain that. The third one involves graphs, but graphs are actually sufficiently general <coughs> that you're already in a category. So there is a really nice way of just write, rewriting everything that's written here just as a deconcatenation co-product. So the only thing you're saying is, I have, a cog I, have a, I have a category, I have morphisms, what I can do is I can sum over all compositions of morphisms in this, in this fashion. Uh, and then probably I want to see which one is, I, I'm always stuck at this, so this is phi zero. What are the conditions on your morphisms just to be a, a, a half-half? No, so uh, first of all, this should be finite or rated finite so that that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And the second thing is you should be living in a finite category. 
Okay, we'll give you a spank. I will explain. Okay, so, so that's the, and then, and then in the end, we heard about cubicles, so somebody asked, you know, there are people that love cubes and cubicle complexes, and you can ask, is it cubicle? Yes, and everything is cubicle. So if I have time, I'll explain that. And uh, so we've seen cubicle complexes come up. So this is, this is uh, three times the same picture, just in different. So this is the cubicle version of just the simplicial part, where the simplicial part you can think of either as coronas or as ladders. So here I saw them as ladders. So this is a way to realize, so for people that like algebra, this is, the middle picture is probably nice because it looks like the bar complex. And the right hand side, that looks actually exactly like the terms that appear in the in the partition for uh, sorry, the terms that appear in the co-product uh, of Gunshot. And that's my mistake. Alright, so now I'll start in earnest. So one just simplicial. So I should also uh, uh, thank uh, the organizers of the workshop in Cambridge because I, I learned a lot of these things there and there were algebraic topologists there and they figured out, you know, it looks very familiar, especially this doubling of indices and everything that was remarked can be made rigorous. That's, uh, everything that looks alike is, a, is actually the same if you uh, think about it. So what's the simplex? So one, two, so I think of it as sort of a small category, so it's just a bunch of uh, 0 to n, and you have a morphism from i to j is i is, is, I is less than j. And I also use this guy, this is just the set 1 n. Notice there is, a, there is a difference here, and this will have something to do with the doubling of indices. This guy has n plus 1 members, this one has, only has n. It's dual. Alright, so uh, if you have, so there is so anyway, so this is a simplicial set. And I can't go through everything that the simplicial set does, but uh, what it has, it has n simplices. These are given, the set of n simplices is xn. And it has, if you have a morphism from m to n, so if I wrote it, this is the, I'm sorry, I, I'm sort of an algebraic geometry of a training, so I like categories the most. So if you want to figure out what, what a morphism is, it's a functor. And you can also do this with ordered sets, and then it's fine, but it's a functor. So if you're for any functor from m to n, you also get uh, um, an inverse morphism from xn to xm. And uh, what we'll do is if I take an x in this, so if I take an x in my xn, then I will denote alpha of this, so this gets mapped to, which is alpha star, to something which I'll write x alpha a or a0, a0, a1, <coughs> a n. 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 N in N, ah, I hate N in Okay, yes. Um, so let's see, this one went from N to N, so this goes from N to N, and then uh, now we're going, and these are the images. And uh, so that notation should remind you of that notation with the symbol, the symbol I just got made into the symbol X, okay? All right, so what is, so, uh, so let's give me an example of something simplicial. So, uh, simplicial. So is in the nerve of a category is simplicial. So what's an n-simplex? It is just a, well you guessed it. X n minus one. So again, there's something fun going on with between n and n plus one. So it's a it's a uh, series sequence of composable morphisms of n composable morphisms, that means it goes from x0 to xn. So there are n plus 1 spaces and n morphisms. And if you like puzzles and are thinking about that, you see in the top line 0, 1, 2, 3, ABC, ABC are the morphisms, 0, 1, 2, 3 are the, are the spaces. Okay? So and then uh, you, you can do uh, what's a simplicial structure. So what you can do is you can uh, concatenate morphisms. This makes this thing shorter. And if you want to make it longer, you just put in identities. 
So that's a, that's a nice simple complex. So, uh, so here's a nice category. So an example of a C is one we like very much. It is 0, 1, just the groupoid, which looks like this. I'll write it this way. So this has morphisms uh, in 0, in 1, just some morphism which I call phi 0, 1, and a morphism phi 1, 0, which is phi 0, 1. <coughs> So, uh, of course, you know, I could just do this stupid thing. This, this, uh, this could remind you of uh, pi 1 of c minus 0 and 1, and that would not be wrong. But at the moment, it's just a groupoid. So, so actually, for any s, <coughs> any s, I can have the groupoid s, which has this nice thing that between s and t, there exists a unique. So for all, maybe I write this way, there exists a unique phi which goes from S to T. So that I would have to remember these things. So let's do this here. So what is the nerve of my groupoid on 0, 1? Well, this is N. So this is something which has N morphisms, but I can write this down as just a sequence. Or maybe, maybe I write this as better D S. Well, what is this? This is equal to just S0, Sn. Because uh, I should have the morphism, so let me write this maybe in two words. So S0, S1, Sn, but I can just write because I have, for every one, I just have a, I just have one exact morphism for each pair of letters. I have this. So actually, you see that uh, N, G of S, N, this is just words words in S of length n plus 1. OK? So then uh, to get to from these letters, uh, you know, from this half algebra of, of Gontroff, yes? I, I don't know. Is S a category? Just a set. What is S? Just just a what is phi? So what, so, so what I'm saying is, uh, GS, given a set, there is a canonical category I can write down, which has objects S, right? And HOM, S1, S2, this contains one element. And it's a category you can compose. Yes. So your, ex so your example is not an example, because if I go from 0 to 0, I surely have the identity. Yes. But I also have phi 0, which is not the identity. I have phi, so phi the st uh, is equal to phi t s. Phi zero zero one. One. There's a comma. It's phi zero 1 looks like a comma down. Ah. Yes, Sorry? phi 0 1. I no, yeah, I'm saying that there's, zero zero one, but there's also phi 0. Yeah, it goes from 0 to 0. Phi 0 to 0. Yeah, but it's not the identity. Oh. But you also have the identity. So how no, 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 no. I have no, no. It is the identity. So why did you write it then? Uh, it, it's zero. It's zero. That's I wrote the identity. Oh, you put that now. Okay, so that, that is the. Identity. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Now then I'm okay. That's just what was possible. I thought you had five ah. zero. No, 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 no. It is the identity. <laughs> but it's not a fundamental group of this. Yeah, it, it looks like it. <laughs> it's effective. <laughs> Uh, okay, no, that's okay. That's it's fine. It, it is, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you have to have tangential base points, blah, blah, blah. But anyway, that, that's not, it's, just, it's just words. See, I don't, we're jumping too much ahead. So, so is it fine that for every, for every set I can write down just some category, which is a group point? And then that has the thing that if I look at a length n thing here, it's just a word. So the only thing I said is that if you have words in an alphabet, you can think of those things as having a simplicial structure, because words are simply simplicial guys, namely the nerve of this category. And then you know what happened. Then you, then you have all these simplicial maps. So now, uh, I wanted to, so, so when the first, the first point here was to explain this formula, why the formula upstairs there is natural. So your point is that the simplicial maps correspond to 
contracting words and inserting words, right? Yeah, uh, yes, well, I'm inserting identities more or less. Oh, duplicating, so inserting an identity duplicates, duplicates a letter, right. and otherwise we shorten it okay. by, uh, by omission. So uh, that's the first thing. So you see, words are sort of simplified. And um, yeah, where was I? OK, so now there is something, there is some interesting thing. So there is a map which takes, so there this brackets is that thing, destroyed union n1 with n or m, m1 to this one union, mk to bracket n, where n is <coughs> already mk. And, and this just, so how do you do this? So it's exactly uh, what you do is, if you have well, it will look pretty much exactly like what we do. So yeah, uh, what you do is you write zero up to m1 here, and um, well, let's see. Uh, I prepared something nicer. So what I should do is I should tell you how to glue together these. Uh, to get, uh, I have, this is a functor, so I have to tell you where stuff goes. So so where, where does this go? So first of all, I have my um, so in the end, I want to have a very long chain, which goes up to n. And uh, you sort of guessed it. So I take the first chain, which goes up to m1. And uh, so this will be m1. And then I start with 0 again. And then I have the chain that goes to m2. And this one then will go to, I hope I wrote this down, because I'm not going to be able to figure it out, uh, m1 plus m2. Is that correct? Uh, zero, yeah, that sounds right. Sounds right. And then and then so on. And uh, the zero k, this will just go zero, and then one, two, and so on. So the map will move from bottom to top. So this piece here is the functor which puts it in the first slot here. This one in the second slot. These are the same. And the k tells me exactly where these dots are. And that first one is the yellow underlining. Exactly. Not. Exactly. And, and this is, so this is secretly already an opera structure. Okay. So you don't mean the product of those categories <coughs> K, M1, 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 you mean really the, the good product? I mean the disjoint union, yes. Okay. But how could you say not the same in the places where you want to do? I'm not quite sure what you're saying. So then, uh, then I just do three visualizations, and then I'm pretty much done with the simplicial part. So, um, so what this does is, so I have this operat structure. So basically, this gamma. So let me put this as a little lemma. Maybe I should say this is with uh, any tongs and Ima Chavez Camillo. So it's gamma uh, form an operat structure. I can ask you a question. What, what is the meaning of plus and one plus and two? It's got sets. So it's uh, so zero, so one, two, two case where this is four, five, it's nine. Oh, so this, is, this is a special case of integers, not sets. The previous example, you have sets. Yeah, the previous example said, no, no, I, I, this is some underlying, this is the reason. OK, so uh, to say something, I have something about words, yeah. and I have the structure for words. Okay, first you realize words are simplicial, yes. and as simplicial guys, any simplicial guy will have an operation by this stupid uh, little remark, mm -hmm. because this is about simplices. This is as simple as it gets. Oh, you take the functor from that into your category. Yeah, that's right. And, and then it will turn around the yeah. it will turn around the functor reality. So something okay. will happen that you're getting ahead of me. In this picture, why are you including the, the first K? I mean, it's fixed by the other data. Uh, so to get an opera. Okay. okay. 
it's, it says the slots where you're supposed to, it counts the slots where you're supposed to put it. But, but it's uniquely fixed. I mean, it's, 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 uh, it's uniquely fixed, yeah. <coughs> Which is fine. It's the same thing with that formula. I mean, I can, I can read off the indices. Actually, in, in the sense, somehow, yes I, yes, I can. So that sequence in the co-product, also the first term, is superfluous for the same reason, right? Because I have all these indices and I can read them off the right-hand side. Nevertheless, I include them on the left because it's a co-product. But that's exactly the answer. Okay. So it's really if you have lots of ones on the right-hand side, you have a, a word of length, an empty word in the middle. We'll get to the empty words. And then you're going to need your K to... I'll get to the empty words. <laughs> Sorry. No, no, but I'm happy. Just, just I'm happy. Stand. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Just, just bear with me for a while. At the moment, I'm just explaining how such a formula is natural. And, um, and to answer, so, so Don asked a question, but let me, let me write one more line and then answer it again. So this xn, so the point is that I, that's xn is, I can think about this as hum, and I'll just write something, delta n, um, to my superficial guy, x, where am I? x, so this gamma induces So a dual structure, co-op rad structure on this x. And what does it look like? It sends x to x and 0. Well, what did I use up there? i, 0, i, k. comma, x, i0, i0 plus 1, and then it's the sum here, and I think I called them i before a before a, and so on. So the same formula. Okay, and then there is something which you have to do, so this is actually interesting, so I'm finding now x i, I k minus 1, a k minus 1, so x a k, which is n. So this is, so there is this uh, thing, so this almost looks like, like your, uh, like your co-product, this has all the terms in the co-product. And so, but now we sort of have to say that this is the left term, and all these right terms, which which come, you know, they don't know they're they're all the same type. So the map is now going backwards from here to here, to the covariance. Now we have to put them together. So we have to formally. That's why you take a formal free product. So you can make this a formal free product. So you say that this is a formal <coughs> free product. And then the sum, the sum sign is also formal. Oh, I know it's a sum over uh, the same same stuff that's up there. So sum over k, sum over these alpha, these maps. So so x is a like a simplicial abelian group. Uh, no, it's not, not an abelian group. It's just a, it's just a simplicial set. And what I do is yeah, I, I, I take, take uh, so if you want to take formal formal product or formal sum, if you want to write a plus, which I really don't want to do, you take z coefficients or something like that. Okay, great. But under that That's what a free product does for you. It says the symbols make sense if you write them down. Yes? I think there's a mistake. So on the left you keep track of the a's, but then on the right you're supposed to put like x0, 1, 2, 3, and so on. No, no, that's correct. Um, <laughs> no, it's the same formula. There's, there's, nothing, there's, nothing, there's nothing going on. It's exactly the same formula. It's i0 up to i k, and then the next one here. So that's the, that's the Greek, Greek k part. The m part is the one which goes from 0 to m1. The m2 part, which you read there, is the one which goes from 0 to m1 plus m2, and so on. So it's exactly the same. It's exactly the same. Okay? All right, so this is this is kind of nice. So what we have here, so basically, we have if uh, so we have a nice proposition which says that uh, if x dot is a simplicial set, simplicial set in C, say with finite products. 
Uh, I should could have I could have done crosses. Maybe that would have been better. So if I have finite products, I can do crosses like then x's look the same. Then uh, x dot uh, is a cooperand. And let me uh, make this a little quicker. Uh, if you add a free multiplication. What you get out is a by outcome. <clears throat> okay. So now let me explain this by algebra a bit of it. So what happens? So um, is the following. And in that formula you're summing over i's, but here you're summing over a. That's where you can do Yeah, but I also call the indices r a's instead of i's. And then you should replace them now on the right side, A's by A's. There are A's up there and there are A's down here. Actually, I did. In my notes, I didn't, but on the board, I did. Look, upstairs, there's an A and an I. There's A ah, there's an zero. A and an I. <coughs> yes, yeah, so now some. Ah, okay, okay. So I that, think uh, X, is, X is A and A is I. Yes. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, there it still doesn't matter. You don't get that formula. Yeah, that's right. It doesn't matter. Which looks like x. Yeah, it's, it's a fun. That's why I had the formula. So it's the same formula. <laughs> oh my god, this is, this is ridiculous. The formula is this formula. I explained it twice that it's the correct formula. I think everybody knows that it's the correct formula. Okay. And if it's if the if summing, I'm summing over the index if it's called a or i it doesn't matter. I think we learned that in grade school. All right. Maybe we can get back to some more serious mathematics now. So uh, where was I? So I was try trying to explain how so that this is a cooperative structure. So if I dualize this, and now you can see some so some of the same magic happening. Instead of writing brackets, I write this OK. O n dual going to direct sum. So you can complain once more. And one now they call n like there. O check k sensor. O check n one sensor. O check m k. So that wouldn't be a nice by algebra thing. So what you need to add is, so if you have a co operator, you need a multiplication. So also add a map mu from O check N uh, tensor O check M to O check N plus M. And then what I can do is I can take this map down here and I can take the identity <coughs> tensor mu to the k uh, minus first power, and I want this to be associative. Sorry, what is O check M? O check M is a cooperator. Mm -hmm. That is a good question. O check M, gamma check is a cooperator. So a cooperator is a collection of objects in some category, together with uh, uh, morphisms like this that satisfy us. It's anyone, a new one. Anyone. So I'm now, as I'm going through one, two, three. I sort of explained one. It's actually a simplicial cooperand. And now I'm trying to explain what I did just more generally. Because somehow the only thing I needed was this map gamma, which produced these results. But then in, 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 in the point was that this gamma is actually this operand map, which got utilized to a cooperand map. So where we were was that x dot, the simplicial guy, is a cooperand. <coughs> And now I was saying, well, to understand this formula, to the left-hand side, 10 to the right-hand side, because it doesn't look the same. Right? If I do a cooperate, I have tensor signs here everywhere. And I took the free product and said I want to consider the right-hand side as just one object. And I, I just said, well, it did. why not take the free product? And that does that. So that's why it's actually the half algebra of forests, not of trees. Okay? Uh, but to formalize that, I mean, I could have any product which allows me to multiply together these guys. That I want to take graded. And so here I can take O check K, uh, which is the identity, and here I multiply them together. And so the sum of these MIs was uh, N. <coughs> so this is O check N, right? So this is the sum of the MIs is N. So I left that on the board here. It's the same thing. 
Okay, so this is this is the general structure. Then I get a map here, delta. So and then there's a nice little thing which says. So I said I add multiplication, get a by algebra. So now I can have a nice little theorem again, saying you have a you have a co -op, right? So what's a nice theorem? So it says theorem. You have a co -op, right? with multiplication. So that's the triple of these O check ends. This gamma check and this mu. And uh, plus the compatibility equation, which I don't want to write. I, I, I'll say what it is. It's the obvious one if you apply gamma twice. Uh, then you have to then you get these factors coming in the wrong place and you have to put together just like if you do so if you do it for the forests. If you apply delta twice, then you get a lot of, you know, you take a tree, you get a forest. And you get a forest, you have to apply something. So you get forest to forest. And then you have to permute the, the, the bases of these forests together. So that's the equation. It's the most natural one. So it yields, yields a bi-algebra. E, which is the direct sum of these O shots N, and uh, with this delta, which is the delta above, and uh, yeah. okay. So you have to be a little bit careful. So uh, assume, first of all, that O check zero is empty. Uh, why do I need that? Uh, so this goes to what uh, Francis was already alluding to. If I write this down, then I have stuff uh, which has like zero. So just the uh, there's two things, and then those things are not good. Uh, upper at degree zero, which is actually then two, uh, two letters. And uh, so I have to be careful with those, and at the moment I'll exclude them. But maybe since time is advanced, maybe I'll just say something. There, uh, because somehow you can include them in a, in a co-action. So this is somehow, this goes back to a question that uh, you can include them. But how about Gaga asked me? In call action. Well, I mean, you could include them here, so let me, let me put it this uh, Actually, sorry. Uh, so, uh, so let me try to do this. So actually, let's do some examples for this. So what you can do is here for a call, right? You start out with an opera. O, o, o is just an opera without. O zero, say, and then you just take O check of this guy and to be O check O dual and dual. So you see, because this was an opera, then you get this gamma check, and then you can do this free construction, and then you say that O check non-connected is direct sum over uh, and direct sum over K and uh, O check. So there's a co-op, right? And O check N C. That's oh, right, O check N N1 MK. O check N1 So this is a co-op right? with modification. So the usual way we get these things is you start with an operad, just like I did before, you dualize, then you get a co-operad, then you don't have a multiplication yet. So what you do is you go to the tensor algebra with the right gradient. And so this is the step where you're going from, so here it would be, you know, it would be trees. Here it would be actually be dual trees, which are trees. <coughs> so actually it's uh, characteristic functions on trees if you're careful. Uh, there's an opera of trees where you graph together. If you want to cut apart, you just take the dual, which is the functions. And here you're going to force. So this sort of gives me example two. Okay. So where uh, trees here is O n is a tree with n leaves. So, so in your theorem, your whole algebra is always graded and connected. Uh, no, it's a bi-algebra. Oh, it's it's neither, at the moment, it's a terrible thing. 
It's non-unital, it's non-co-unital, and it's not connected. <laughs> so there's no way to get a grading by just shifting. Uh, it's graded. It's graded. Okay, but your formula. You can see that it's graded. Like, <laughs> oh, sorry. It's, uh, yeah, it's graded by n minus k. There, there is a, there is a grade. If you grade it by n minus one, it works out actually. Did I hear you say that you need your rigid trees to be planar? No, you did not hear me say that. What I said precisely was, let's assume for the moment that they're planar. Okay. Mm -hmm. Anything can be done. Unfortunately, the paper is 90 pages, which says that anything you want to know, the answer is yes, there is a construction for it, which is precisely made, which would take me 15 minutes to explain. Thank you. Okay. So at the moment, uh, so the easiest one to see is where I take, you know, I take actually trees with leaves and then uh, I just stick them onto it, onto this usual thing. I stick uh, roots onto these things and I glue to leaves. That's an operad structure. It obviously has this thing that has a dual co-operad structure which cuts and I get the leaf version of this thing. So, uh, okay, but I'll take your comment. I'll write this out as a, as a thing. So, uh, there, there are several points here so for this example. So this is actually on this example two that I said. So if we go back, so I have to explain the one here. So two has variations. So two is straight up. I had planar with leaves. So if you want to do uh, uh, non-planar, so just trees, what you have to do is you have to divide out by symmetries. Divide out by sort of symmetries of the tree that, that turn around the leaf. So this is basically, you can do this using co-invariance. Co-invariance just means you take one thing, you act with it on a group, and you say it's the same. And so that can be done. And you can amputate. I don't have time to do this. If you symmetrize, what one thing that happens is actually maybe, uh, now I'm too tempted, depends on what people want to know. So if you start symmetrizing, so you know, because you don't know in which order they come, once you cut them off, they don't have an order. So then your product is not the free product, but the symmetric product. So that's a little thing. You could do something that Kovarch likes to do, uh, which is saying that instead of, well, I mean, I could have known that this is i, j, k, and then this root is root i, this is root j, this is root k, so although if I cut them off, I have these three thin guys on the right hand side. I know if I permute these guys, I have to permute these. I don't really know. I still know where they are from. You can do that too. You can read it, guys. So there are these three ways of doing it. Okay, now I'd like to address the. So now I'd like to address the. Uh, this bit about the I algebra versus the Hoff algebra. This is actually really nice. And see, the problem is maybe I can actually do it here. So what happens? So the interesting cuts are the ones that are the bad cuts. So if I take a cut like this, I would see the same tree here, but tensor three of these leaves. Okay, that's not the Hopf algebra I wrote down. But that's what happens with the Bi algebra. The same thing if I take the cut underneath, I would see this tensor. So that's fine, but if I had a forest, I would say this times this tree tensor. Let's see, four five. I'm always bad at drawing trees. That's why I prefer to write tau. But I mean, I get this tree, and but then two roots. Okay, which is not what I wrote there. Inadmissible. Well, they're inadmissible cuts, but the only well, you know what the answer is, right? This would be one. I write one in k, and this should also be one in k. All right. So, uh, what do you do? Well, you force that. So you figure out something, and this is kind of nice. So first of all, this has no unit. I didn't get to the co-action. I probably won't. But you can figure out that if you had an O0, then if you do this dualization process, you might kind of run into trouble with finiteness of the co-product, uh, of, uh, yeah, of the co-product. Uh, but if you only keep terms which have one part O0 to a certain power, then you get a co-action. And I think that's, that's what's going on. So, I mean, uh, okay, so let me just you know, go for this by algebra. So the first thing is you can add a unit. And this is uh, just you write uh, one plus b, so this one is, say is k or z or 
a unit in whatever one of the category you happen to live in. So this, is, this has now a unit. And then you take H to be E prime modulo of the ideal generated by 1 minus bar. And I have to explain what bar is. So bar is a special element. So you have to have an epsilon, uh, which I didn't give you, and you have an eta, which is a map from 1 to O shape 1. And then you want to map back, uh, sorry, let's see, no, um, sorry, you have epsilon from O shape 1 to uh, 1, and you want so, uh, to rule to the unit. And so here you have, you want a section. So you want, uh, you say there's a split, and then with S and S of 1K is this bar. So you need, you, you need some split condition, which is fine. I mean, this is the most general way of writing it down. If you have vector spaces, it's split. Okay. If you have something weird, maybe not. But the way it's set up, it's completely general. So if you have this and you mod out by this guy, then that actually this guy, you can show that this is connected. This is connected to the and, and uh, yeah, and then and greater, yeah. So you're in a part of the Yeah. So then, then, then you have a half out rough. <coughs> so that's that's what's happening. Uh, so when you do that, then these multiples of these v's just all become one. And where do you see that? Well, I mean, uh, you do see that. That uh, so where do you see that in, in Gonshaw? It's the fact that you say that the sum of a m t b is one. And in two, in one time, you say that the empty tree is one. Right? And how do I see that? Because that's the amputated version. If I amputate this guy, I see an empty tree. And as some people always make fun of me, but the point is there's only one empty forest. <laughs> there might be many empty forests containing any number of empty trees. It depends on how you write it down. So this is so, so, this is, so there's only one empty forest. By uh, you know the simple empty empty empty. You could actually construct the natural numbers with empty 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 empty. So uh, if, if you if you do it right, so but here you make them. So that's the half algebra part. So maybe let's see where am I? Fifteen minutes. So maybe I want to say two more things about this. So I said I, I'd give some details. What you could do is actually you can uh, write the following thing, which I found, which might be somebody might find interesting. Uh, you can take the same d prime and mod out by the ideal generated by a bar minus bar a, and then call uh, the image. of bar equal to q. So you're sending it, making it central, and sending it basically sort of to the field and making it commutative, right? So, and then, and then you have a different grading. So here in the grading, there is a grading which survives. Again, it will take me 10 minutes to explain, so I can't do it, but in private, I'll be happy. Uh, so here there is an obvious grading from just the operat action. And you would get a q to the power of 3 here, where you could, and, and this is very nice. So, and then you get your h is the limit as q goes to 1 of this hq. So that's kind of cute. Uh, then there's an infinitesimal version. Um, yeah, maybe actually I'll, I'll go over there. And this is nice. I probably won't get the cubicle. That's too bad. Let's say a few words at the end. But I think this might be more helpful. So there's an infinitesimal version, so where is that? So this is kind of nice because we've seen structure like this. So go back to operas. So I'm talking about infinitesimal version and and choline. 
if you go back to uh, operas, uh, then uh, we had Dresden opera. So this touches on many things we've seen already. Uh, who said, well, I can take, actually, called well, pseudo operas. Uh, that means you have circle I, we go from ON tensor ON to ON plus M minus 1. So, and then uh, you do A circle B, so this is like the star product. And you may or may not include a sign here, and this is like a, this is pre E, which means that if you take the commutator, you can think I could have also written A star B. Um, if you take the commutator for these guys, a, and write this A, B is A star B times B star A. This is the lead bracket. Uh, but moreover, if you have some sort of multiplication, what you can get out is you can get a Garrison over bracket. So this is uh, if you have a multiplication. And uh, so it's Gerson, but it's, quite, it's not quite the same as Poisson because the signs are off. So the, in Poisson, the signs of the, the grading for multiplication and the lead is the same, but the Gerson are one off by each other. This is very important. It actually has a lot to do with cubical structure in the bar complex. So, but in any case, so you can do this, and then uh, you can do, so you could do, uh, so you have the circle operation, so you have a dual operation, which is the co-circle operation. And this gives you uh, this infinitesimal structure that, that, that Franz Brown used uh, to, to have this derivation. So, uh, you then, uh, so if you have this, so, so what you get is a pseudo co operand with multiplication, this yields these, this uh, circle dual, uh, which is again the sum, and you have the multiplication mu, and they have this nice uh, formula, which is that delta mu is it tensor mu. Delta tensor A plus mu tensor A in then delta. So from this uh, you get out these operations B R. So basically, and you can see that um, uh, and you get a co you get a co pre D. Uh, of Brown on H bigger on the on these on on the set of uh, what are they called non decomposables. So does does this happen all the time? All the time. All the time. All the time. So so there is a slight difference between pseudo co and pseudo co so operas and co operas uh, and pseudo operas, but if you forget about that, then all the time. It's something about a unit. So on a previous board, your operand was equipped with some squiggle, as I think was gamma. Has that got lost, or is it? Uh, it's a mu. It's a multiplication. Uh, uh, the squiggle gamma? wasn't mu. Uh, um, oh no, the gamma was the operand. That has. Yeah, that's that's the same question. So here, uh, that got replaced by this com uh, by this collection of circle eyes. Thank you. And uh, the way that works is, uh, it, uh, I erase the tree. So think about the trees. Uh, there are two ways of doing trees. Either you say I plug a tree into each leaf, okay, that's a full operation, that's a gamma. Or I could say, well, I just plug one, that's a circle I. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have identities, you can say, well, I plugged in one and identities everywhere else, and that's the gamma, so that's how you go between two. Yes, so that's, that's exactly what's going on. So this chops off one, so in this, in this co product, what it does, but it's kind of subtle because you have to take, so this cube grading is actually nice to keep track of that. So this means it's one cut, right? The circle I just had, puts in one guy, and uh, the cold circle I just is one cut. So that you only get one piece on the right-hand side, and that's exactly why you're calling out these primitives. And it's kind of, you have to write it this way, or if you do the Q thing, you would see uh, some grading, you can see that that actually happens. So in the tree case, this gives you differentiation with respect to a tree? Yeah. Right. And in the case four, what's... In the case four, so let me, let me just go through a little bit uh, quick enough. So those are, those are kind of nice things to look at. Uh, the co-action I can't do, but you can, you can write it down. So uh, it's just, uh, you keep the terms of O0, which is kind of nice. And I think that might be happening. So 
before I wasn't aware that, see I learn stuff when it comes to Bonn or to Berlin or anywhere. So before I just knew this uh, co-action was a factor uh, of zeta 2, but now we have a motivic co-action. So maybe it's just, it's not just an O0, so first of all I thought this little bar or this Q plays the role of the zeta 2, which is this obvious co-action that you can do. Uh, but if you have something more complicated, maybe you have an O0, which you can see. So then let me skip to the graphs and uh, spend the last five minutes on five categories. Um, and this is, this is fairly easy. So um, that's the four, and then do it in the wrong, wrong order. So what is the Feynman category? Feynman category is just a tensor category. Uh, so it's actually plus extra structure, OK? And especially on the morphism. So uh, you can decompose morphisms. Uh, that's, that's the thing, so, and then uh, what can you do? So let me uh, do this A. If you have any Renoida category tensor, so first of all, for any C, you can write down the following, you can look at the morphisms of C, and you can write down delta of phi is what I wrote down there, phi zero tensor phi one, phi zero after phi one is phi. So let's say uh, if it has phi now, decomposition, you can write this down, so that's, uh, that's actually so known since earlier, this is, that's or equal to the 70s. Kobe Torres wrote this down. I had to track it down, but you can go to Rota and Rota stole it from somewhere else and then, uh, <laughs> And you can track down. And unfortunately, I call the reference Mobius Guy. So <laughs> my excuse is for Mobius Guy because like now I can never remember these things are called Mobius categories. And so now I can never remember his actual name. So sorry about that. And, and now I'm live. So, but, so maybe. And B, if you have a tensor category, you also have a multiplication, which is just tensor. OK. So you could think uh, what the nice theorem is, well, if. Uh, if you see is F is a final category, then the morphisms of F are a bi alpha. So what you have to check is the bi algebra equation. And that will not hold in general. But since you have extra conditions, which I didn't give you, uh, then uh, then uh, you can check that the bi-algebra condition holds. That's the abstraction. So this means, uh, and what's the proof is you check bi-algebra. And you see you couldn't do that for just any tensor category. All right, um, so now what should I say? So let's do three. So there is, so there are always, the, there are final categories as graph for various graphs, for various graphs, where the morphisms are basically, are basically graphs. And how does it work? Actually, uh, the simple objects are just uh, rows, and the way these maps decompose says that actually any map decomposes into uh, a bunch of tensor product of, of these Easy guys, say k of them. You see, it looks very much like this upright picture. K of them, and then uh, you map to t. And the question, so you have morphisms here. So what is a what is a for these graphs? There is an underlying graph of the morphisms. This is a graph. And so what is if you look at the source? It's basically the vertices of the gamma. And what's the target? It's uh, gamma. So let's say this is connected in the connected case. It's gamma mod the edge of gamma. Okay, and there, there's a little bit more to that. And now you can have restrictions. I don't really impose connected. You can also do non-connected, then I have to write more stuff. You can write trees. And then what happens is, what is, the, what is the concatenation? You can check this, check it out, what the concatenation is. It's plugging of graphs into vertices. 
you expand a, a target vertex by the graph that sits in there. That's concatenation. And then you see that the deconcatenation is exactly of this form. It's, it's this guy. So you get this bi-algebra, and then so you get this again. So you do the same thing. You get the bi-algebra. And again, you have the problem that this is, uh, this is actually, you immediately get a unit because of, of just uh, stupidity, because there is sort of the empty corolla is the tensor unit, so this has a unit. But then you can mod out by basically it x minus it y by the identities. And then you get a half algebra. So then you have this half algebra. But what the hell has it got to do with five minutes graphs? I mean, that's ah, it's, 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 <laughs> it's uh, if you think about I'm that. Speaking on his behalf, on his grave, you know, he would not be happy. <laughs> I'm not sure. So uh, it's it's uh, what is the slice category? So the slice category is everything that maps into one object, right? And what is the slice category here? It's exactly the, the S matrix. So uh, x over x over some uh, some x is just is the S matrix matrix terms. Namely, it's a sum. So I fix the external. So this P fixes the external leg structure. Yes. And uh, what can I do? It's all the graphs that uh, yeah. go into yeah. here. Yeah. And that those are all the maps that I can have yeah. here. So it's, it's, and so it is fine. Externally, yeah. external leg structure. Yes, so and then you can impose, right. you know, if you want to get the finer ones that uh, Zook or Francis write down, these half algebra, there's a nice way to decorate these yeah, things. Yeah. There is a, this is, this is, this is fun in itself. You can, on that level, you can do many constructions, and then, uh, I think I said like five minutes late, so I, I'll just say the rest of the words. What you can do with these guys here is you can figure out that you now on this level you can also play games. And uh, you can do a, a, something called a W construction, which to each of these guys constructs a space. So these are, these are categories which are basically uh, combinatorial. They're just sets. Uh, you can construct spaces. So you can have, and then that's a W construction. So you can ask yourself, well, if I take all the connect connected spaces, and so, and so what do I get? If I just plug W into that, I just get metric graphs, which is interesting in itself. It, it, gets, it gets even more interesting if you do the following thing. You can look at F uh, cyclic tree. So these are just trees without roots. And this goes into these connected guys. And if I look at the push forward, so I star W on the trivial guy, this is actually is, is this cubic the complex that, that, uh, that was just written down by Dirk. And if I take just linear guys, I get the cubic complex, which uh, corresponds to the bar complex. And there are another, there are another thing with the cube. So by, by cubic approximation, uh, by diagonal approximation with cubes, I can actually see that the terms that I have there in the cube correspond to the terms in the, in the, um, the co-product. And last, last plug, which I found marvelous, was if I do this, I can, I can set of so this is for uh, the other great geometers in the room or people that like modelized spaces. So if I said would have not use connected but uh, G-graded uh, things, then uh, I can make these guys sort of what I can do is I, I have sort of non-sigma modular guys here and I have planar here, so it has something to do with this planar structure. And if I do the push forward here, I construct actually B gamma, so I construct modelized space with the same operation. It's just the same push forward W uh, on the lower level, where I don't know much, I get the cubic Lejay complex for outer space. If I do it upstairs uh, for the for the planar guys, which has these cyclic orders or polycyclic orders, I get modular space, and it's kind of nice. All right, and I'll stop there. Yes. Do you, do you have a um, a linear algebra model of a uh, finite category? It's not combinatorial. So I was thinking of um, uh, linear maps over finite field, for example. Yeah, you can, you can do this. So linear is, is not a problem. So you, there is an enriched theory of finite categories. Not that I thought about it. But so that somehow, actually, uh, at any time, so actually, I already used it secretly. Because when I was writing down the co product, I have to write sums. Right. So I have to at least go over abelian groups. I didn't explain to you how the operats are related to the finite categories. I didn't have to, so unfortunately, I didn't have time. But they should be the morphisms. So when I write sums, they should be uh, abelian. So it has to be enriched. So yes. Yes. 
So you're saying there are lots of other examples that are Yes, uh, basically all the, uh, you know, even, mm -hmm. even the cold farm rat structure, I, I, I take, you know, I think, so I said morphisms, of course I was lying, so uh, this B here, B is, of course, a free abelian group on the morphisms, right? You know, that, that makes sense. So they have to enrich anyway over abelian groups, so vector space aren't bad. And so there's something. But you know, you can do more stuff. You could think about Lee and stuff. So the most of the things we thought about were actually combinatorial to start with. Yeah. So either these ladders or you know, or uh, corollas or trees or grass. Uh, just because those are the half algebras that people throw at me. <laughs> or I can find somewhere. <laughs> so that's that's that, yeah. Yes? Um, I thought there is some statement that uh, labeled trees is a free operat, something like this. Yeah, they're, they're, I mean, I, you can make this, you can make this picture, you can make this picture bigger. So, I mean, there's like there's cyclic, which are planar trees. You can make them rooted trees, and then you can make them, uh, you can make the planar rooted trees, and then you can look at the different things. So, yes, you can find that by perforce. What would be the free, free thing, free thing, category? What would be just a category of graph? No, 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 the, the, no, no. It goes a little, a little deeper. What you can do is, and I stress that uh, there, there are always two cases. There's a planar case and non-planar case. And the question is, do you take symmetric monoidal categories or monoidal categories? Uh, I said monoidal category, but if you want symmetries, you take symmetric monoidal category. Then you have to take covariance. You get symmetric, you get uh, commutative of algebras. If you're taking non-sigma operas, which the angle deep level trees are, it's sort of, that's why it's free. It actually comes from a, from a non-sigma. If you take non-sigma, then you take monoidal categories, and you get hot algebras that are not commutative or co-commutative. Commutative. In this way, we didn't do a lot, so they're not commutative. So, yeah. so when I was a graduate student, before there were computer programs, I had to be careful about the difference between planar diagrams and yes, uh, how they're written, because um, if I could write them the same diagram two different ways on the plane, and I had to divide by two when yes, I added them up. Yes, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, so they, I had to divide by the cardinality of the group of automorphisms, but, yes. uh, but I knew exactly what I was doing. Uh, so, 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 so I was, uh, I was manipulating with, with <coughs> rational numbers, this, this combinatorics, yes. to, to get the right answer. Yes. Do you bring Z in? <laughs> Do your uh, manipulations in some way? Uh, do, do, do you, in some sense, divide something by two? By two, yes. So, so, so Franz asked about finite fields. So if you do the symmetric work, this has the unfortunate thing that you have all SN, so you have all N factorial, so you have all primes. So and then at one point, it's, uh, you, can, you can be careful, but most people aren't careful. And at one point in your calculation, you identify co-invariants and invariants. So this is, unless you want to be really, really careful, then, uh, then uh, uh, you don't want to do finite fields, but in principle, I think if you don't have symmetries, you can do it. So the planar things you could do. For the graphs, it's a different question. You might have to rigidify them or see see what comes up as the automorphisms. So you know that's it. that's my answer to Z. So usually you work with covariance. I think I think it's fine, but uh, if I go through, I, I know that collaborators and sometimes work sometimes. Uh, not careful enough with covariance and invariance. I think we fix, we fix, we fix this problem. So I think it, it, I think it might go through. But anyway, you have to symmetrize sometimes. So that's your factor on that. Also, if here is here for this cubical thing, but it's the same thing that happens because basically you're always going back between the cube and its quotient by uh, the symmetric group, which is the simplex, and the fact that the cube has n factorial syntheses. So that was the question. So to make it concrete, just in, in Bilk's lecture, he had two matrices. Those are the n-vectorial, so two, two factors.